What are the best running shoes? This is a question that many of us have in our minds, including myself. To be honest, it's a tough one to answer because it depends on many factors and it can be quite personal too. So in this video, I'm going to take the three most popular running shoes from the most popular barefoot shoe company, Vivo Barefoot, and put them through their paces to see if we can find what we are looking for in a barefoot running shoe. Before scripting this review, I asked myself, what do I want from barefoot running shoes? After much thought, I came to the following conclusions. Number one, excellent ground feel. Since I consider myself a barefoot runner, I need to feel as if I'm running as close to barefoot as possible, even though I have shoes on my feet. It's almost like having my own cake and eating it. Number two, wide toe box. If any of you have watched our educational videos on barefoot running, you'll know how important it is to have a shoe that can accommodate toe spread. Number three, comfort. Now, I obviously don't mean a soft, spongy sole type of comfort. Rather, I'm talking about a shoe that's not gonna give me blisters, awkward calluses, or any other problems after long runs. Number four, puncture resistant soles. The point of wearing barefoot shoes as opposed to going completely barefoot is for the shoes to protect the feet from getting damaged due to sharp and dangerous terrain. If a pair can't do that, then I might as well scrap the shoe altogether and save myself the cash. That brings me to the next point, which is price. Please don't rip me off. That's all I have to say. The final two points actually relate to the overall value of the product. The first is durability. I'm not a pro marathon runner clocking hundreds of kilometers per week. Therefore, I expect at least 18 months to two years of life from my running shoes. And lastly, aesthetics. Since I'm spending all this money on barefoot running shoes, it would also be nice if they were appealing enough to wear out with a pair of jeans or shorts too. Kind of a two-in-one shoe, if you will. This is why I've never bought Vibram Five Fingers. While they are probably great running shoes, I just couldn't see myself wearing them in any other scenario. Comment down below if you agree or disagree with this. All right, let's see if Viva Barefoot can meet my basic needs. I have three of their models, each of which are made with subtle design differences to accommodate various running scenarios. The first is the Primus Light 2s, which are road and indoor running shoes. Then there is the Primus Trail FGs. The FG stands for firm ground. These are trail running shoes for dry and rocky mountain trails. The last pair are the Primus Trail SGs, which stands for, you guessed it, soft ground. The Trail SGs are suitable for running on grass, in mud, or any other soft, marshy surface. While most people won't need all three, believe it or not, I do. I'll take you through my running regime in just a minute to explain why. I'll also give my feedback on whether all three models have performed well in these different situations. Okay, so ground feel. All three shoes sport a very minimal 3mm rubber sole. However, the Trail FGs have extra 3mm lugs for extra grip and protection during trail runs on rocky surfaces, giving them a total thickness of just 6mm from foot to ground. The Trail SGs have even thicker 5mm lugs to help grip soft, moist ground, making its total sole thickness 8mm. Personally, for casual everyday wear, I like the Primus Lights, mostly because it is the slickest sole at just 3mm in total thickness, hence giving me the most ground feel. I also found them to be the best for road running. However, I'm a keen trail runner too, and I find that I can't handle rocky surfaces in the Primus Lights, especially running downhill. With the Primus FG, those 3mm lugs give just enough protection and grip to make running down a rocky hill pain-free. So the FGs work great for the intended purpose. Now, I'm not a Spartan racer and I live in a very dry climate, so the SGs wouldn't normally be my first choice. However, I recently joined a futsal club where we play once a week on AstroTurf. Since, to the best of my knowledge, barefoot soccer shoes don't exist, the Trail SGs are the next best thing. So far, they're holding up great. The 5mm lugs give me all the grip I need to quickly change direction without slipping while the tight neoprene sock design helps the shoe stay tight against my foot, reducing the chances of rolling my ankle. I guess now you can understand why I use three different pairs of running shoes. Moving on to the point about a wide toe box. All three shoes are equally wide with the exact same shape toe box. I have my one-to-one -one scale cut out of my toes, so let's see how they match up. Eh, it's kind of on the borderline. There could be a little more room here, I also don't have very wide feet, so I'm not sure Viva Barefoot shoes would work for people with very broad feet. 
This being said, I do use the very thin inner sole they provide in the box. When I remove the inner sole, it definitely increases the space within the shoes. In terms of comfort, all three pairs have been great. As I said before, the Primus Lights give the most amount of ground feel, which I enjoy for everyday casual use and road running. The only issue I had was with the Trail SGs. There is some rough stitching on the inside of the heel wall, and I made the mistake of wearing ankle socks to a soccer game one week. I had no skin on my heels by the end of the game. Since then, I've made sure to wear longer socks, which has resolved the issue. The trail shoes come with elasticated laces, but the package includes normal laces too. To be honest, I like the elasticated laces because it can easily get the perfect fit each time, and they are easy to slip on and off. I wish the Primus Lights came with the option of both laces too. One standout feature every Viva barefoot running shoe has is the brand's patented puncture resistant soles. So despite the fact that they are so thin, I haven't worried about stepping on something sharp and cutting my feet to pieces. This is a huge plus for me since the only reason I ever wear shoes outside the house is to protect my feet from danger. I must say though, it would be a lot cheaper if we could just walk around everywhere barefoot. A pair of Viva barefoot running shoes range from $145 to $160. Now that's without the 10% discount code we got from the company for our viewers. But it's still a lot of money and I want to know if it's worth the investment. So if we look at things objectively and take say the Nike brand as a comparison, Nike shoes are valued at around the same price point for their higher end models. In fact, some of their running shoes even reach the $200 plus price point. So it's not like Vivos are not in line with the market standards for high quality footwear. And really that's what it's about with Viva Barefoot. You get their patented puncture resistant rubber soles and premium eco-friendly materials such as their bio models which are made from corn and algae. Yes, you heard right, corn and algae, making them pretty unique in the industry. But as my dad always says, the proof is in the pudding. If a running shoe can't handle 18 to 24 months of abuse from me, then it's not worth my investment. So I have an older pair of Primus Lights which I got 15 months ago and they've been my go-to running and casual pair ever since. As you can see they are a little tired but still in decent shape. The soles are what impress me the most. They've held up really well despite all the running. However this is the aftermath of sliding down a rope during a crossfit workout one day. These shoes are not designed for rope climbing. The rest of the shoe looks great though. No serious wear and tear can be seen anywhere. I reckon I could get maybe another 12 months of use from them. Finally, we need to look at aesthetics. The Primus Lights steal the show here. They are really good looking shoes. I receive tons of compliments when I wear them and I've even had family and friends move over to barefoot shoes because they like the look of these shoes so much. This really adds to the value of the pair since they are both my road running and casual shoes. The trails are a little more hardcore looking but are not ugly either. I've also heard that they work well as work shoes such as in restaurants and in retail stores where there is often water on the floor. The space between the 3mm lugs prevents water from being trapped under the sole which can prevent slipping. An important feature to have in that setting. It's definitely an interesting use for the Trail FGs. So all in all, Vivo's offerings satisfy my needs for barefoot running shoes. Are they the best barefoot running shoes available? Well, in my opinion, they are definitely up there with the best right now, and I'm excited to see what Viva Barefoot bring out in the future. And if you're new to barefoot running, we have also created a program to help you get your body prepared and adapted to the barefoot gait, while avoiding common injuries such as plantar fasciitis, hamstring pulls, or Achilles tendonitis. We cover everything including hip and ankle flexibility, glute activation and strengthening. We show you how to build your foot arches and use proper running technique and finish off with a precise 24 week barefoot running plan that anyone can follow regardless of their current running program or fitness level. Links to this program are also down below. Well, that's it from us today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Until next time, keep on exercising your health. Cheers.